Do you need a knowledge-based tool for your team and you don't want to pay hundreds of dollars every month for Notion and you maybe not need all the functionality for Notion? Well, then you can give Docmost a try. And this tutorial shows you how to install it on a server because as we see in a bit, this the tutorial for installing it is only for localhost. My name is Toy Carlos and I'm here to increase the effectiveness of software development. And in this video, we're going to look at Docmost and a solution to have a self-hosted Notion for your team, including spaces, so where you can move different teams into their own space. In my daily workflow, I use Notion for almost everything. I use it for any kind of meeting notes, any kind of content ideas, and I use it for my weekly to-do list, as you see here. And especially for the meeting notes, I just learned something in a book I'm reading that you should have some kind of file where you have the meeting notes, you can share them with the person you're doing the one-on-one -on -one with. And I thought this would be a great first use case. So, and that's totally fine that we not only need Docmos for this, um, a quick overview of what is Docmost. We have it linked up here. Docmost basically is like Notion, but it doesn't offer all the functionalities of Notion. For example, you don't have websites, you don't have fancy databases. You do have some, some databases here. We're going to explore this in a bit, but basically what I want to achieve here is just to have a shared one-on-one -on -one log with my team. And if that works, I'm already happy. So what we're going to do today is install this on our own server and we're going to go through this, make our own server here. We're going to set an IP and then we're going to run it and then eventually have this thing going on. So let's go into this right now. And we have this, as you see here, install docmost on my website, tellcarlos.com, so you can read the whole thing. What we need is a server, and this is our first step. We're gonna get a root server, and then we will uh, choose the right app, choose the right size, and then we're gonna attach a domain later on. Okay, so let's first get a server. What we need is a, a Hetzner account. You can do this as well with DigitalOcean or with any kind of other root server that you have. This is just my way of doing it. I like Hetzner, it uh, it's, doesn't cost too much and it's very reliable. So what we wanna do here is choose a location closest to you. I would love to choose like Singapore or Middle East, but right now we only have Germany and US, but okay, let's just take this one here and then we take um, Docker. So if you, do, you look at the install inst installation guide of Docmost, you would see that they that you need Docker and they give you an installation uh, tutorial here. We don't need this if we use the image. So let's just take Docker CE, the latest, and then we need to pick a type. And here it doesn't really matter much. Um, just pick anything that's not too small. We could pick the one for seven bucks. Um, I think something less expensive is also works. So we're gonna go with this one just to keep it simple. And then we need to add the SSH keys. If you don't know how to log into a server with SSH, this, pro this tutorial is probably not for you and you should rather use Notion. Okay, we're gonna add this and we're gonna also add backups. Uh, we don't need this right now because it's our test server. I will tear the server down once I'm done with the tutorial. Okay, so the, the, the domain we're using for here is something that I'm not using anymore. It's called PCN Pro. So what I wanna do is just add this under docs.pcnpro because this domain is gonna be available anyway. I wanna get rid of it. And this is a perfect thing to use for this use case. Okay, let's get a server and we already have our IP. So now we're setting the subdomain A record on our DNS and this is my name chief. This is where I log in. Okay, we add, add another one, A record docs. And now we copy in the IP and that's it. Okay, now we can get out of here. We don't need this anymore. And we should soon see something here, but not right now. We need to do a couple of steps before. So the server is online. Let's see if we can log in. So we should already be able to log in to the server, ssh root at, because the, D the DNS should be set already, but we can test this, of course, if you want to do ns lookup. We already have the same IP that we just put in, so this was fairly fast. Nice, and we are online on our own server. Now, basically, how we install Docmost, the way it works is you do a curl, which downloads this file here, and then you edit that file, you add all kinds of things here, and then you would run it. And basically what it does, you will be able to run it under, in this case, under 3000 and under your URL. The problem is, I could show this for localhost, so I could, you can just basically apply this, this tutorial and have it running locally for yourself. But the problem is there is no SSL and it's not hosted somewhere. And even if it was hosted, you would still need to put in 3000 and have a weird, it's just a weird thing to give out to your team and there is no SSL. So that's what we want to do. In order to do that, we will take this file and we add something to it. And what we're going to add to it is uh, a so-called load balancer. This is the traffic that we have in here. So I'm going to 
add images later on as we go along here, but the file is already prepared. So what we want to do is we want to set up some some things here. Um, the, the, the folder for the certificates, let's do this real quick so we have it. Um, and I'm going to do this on slash doc modes. We probably don't have that yet, so this should fail. Yes. So we're first going to do this. And then we're going to do that. So we have that. Uh, then we're going to make it only readable in some cases. Okay, and we go in there. Okay, and now we have our certificates folder, which is important for the SSL certificate. Now we can just curl this and and look at it. So, but there are a couple of changes necessary. And what I would just do is take our, take the file that I added here and it's almost the same, but I'm going to explain real quick what, what are some differences. And so basically what you could do is you can just copy this thing in here and modify it a bit. And this is what we're going to do. But before we do, I quickly want to explain the changes I made here. So this file comes from Docmost. Yeah. And they ask us to replace this with a long secret, which we will do, and then a strong DB password, which we're going to put in here and also put in here. And then it runs locally. And what we're going to add to that is we will add the networks web. That's something I will check. So a disclaimer for this tutorial, I'm not a sysadmin. Um, I'm a developer. I can self host these things, most of them, but I will always consult with someone who knows more about security than I do. In this case, I'm not sure about the web here, if that actually is a security risk or not. I tried it out. I couldn't access something in something like the database from outside, but still this should be checked. But this is something we can add to that. So we're going to add this service here to, uh, to a network and the network is specified down as being external. This is the same, but we need to add the Postgres password. Um, the Redis is the same, but we have the network, uh, the networks, the web network. And now this is the big thing that we are doing. So we add a traffic and the traffic does not run with their own configuration because I thought it would be easier to put the whole configuration in here. So the command already has all the configuration set in here and even the log level debug, which you can change later. And we also have the port for 8080, which is the dashboard for traffic, which you should also remove later. And the certs folder that we just had here. Okay, so what we're going to do, we will remove this file that we just had here because uh, we just used my file. And then we're going to copy the whole thing in here. So let's copy this. This is the Vim editor. I'm not an expert in this, but I can use it basically. If you don't like Vim, you can probably use something else, um, but you would have to figure that out by yourself. What also works really well is there's a, a there's something from VS Code. What you can use is something called VS Code SSH. And um, this is, it's not this one where you do remote development. It's a plugin, Code Remote SSH. I think this is the thing I, I used. So you can use this in order to connect to a remote server and edit the edit the files yourself. Um, I would recommend that it's pretty easy to set up and it's easier to work with larger files. But okay, we have copied now our contents of this file into into Vim. We have we press I to insert. We insert this whole thing. Make sure that nothing here is broken. And now we have to just add a couple of things. So a couple of things we're going to add email. This is important. Otherwise, we don't get a certificate. We will then add the Postgres password. Ideally, you set something something difficult. So in my case, it's the case for this demo. Uh, in my hosted docmost, I have something more difficult. But here, just for the sake of this demo. And also, this this database is not visible to the outside world. Okay, so we have that. And then we have an app secret. So the idea is to use open SSL run. So I'm going to do this right now in my other screen here. And I get something nice like this. So that is important. Otherwise, the app does not start. Okay, the I is, it's from, from my Vim usage. I'm going to remove it just to have it very clear. Okay. And now this needs to stay HTTP, that's important. And now we're just gonna copy in the, the domain we want and just copy this in here. Okay, 
of course needs to have the right quotes. Okay, and there's one thing I forgot. I think this one here, yeah. Post, and we copy the same in here without HTTP. Okay. And now basically we are running a docmost instance, which I don't know what it is. Uh, I think Node.js or something. This would then tell the traffic that it's it wants to route through this domain and use the web secure entry point. And it connects to the database. Okay. And this would get us then the certificate. Okay. So what we're going to do now, we're going to save this just to make sure we have it. Do we have it? Cat on it. Everything looks nice. And now we do docker compose up as a daemon because we want to run this after our uh, session is over here on the SSH. Okay. This will take some time now. One thing I forgot was the network. Uh, I forgot to to punch that in. Okay. This one here. So let's create this right now. Now we have the network. Okay, let's try to up this thing again. Nice. We have volumes. We have the containers. Maybe we already have the SSL certificate. Let's try. For me, this sometimes takes some time um, because the certificate needs to get pulled. So let's give it another five minutes and wait if it's there now. While we're waiting, I want to look at Notion. Notion is awesome. I use it, I think, in a, in a personal version or in a free version myself. Once you go and work with Teams, of course, you have a lot of functionality. And if you really depend on the whole workflow, Notion is awesome. You have a lot of things like websites and you can have the automations and even like a single sign on. But let's see, even my company, just we, we have like 12 people right now. And there are always some people, some contractors, some people helping, some virtual assistants. So I think usually we would need 20 logins. So this is 2,400 bucks then per year. So it's just something to think about. And this is just the plus package, right? So if you go for business, then you should be at 2,015 times 20 times 12, 3,600. So that's some serious cash that you can save here by using something self-hosted and we bring i mean of course it's not free because heads not cost money we are paying here uh, for this one i think it was around five bucks with back with backups oh it's significantly cheaper but of course we need the backups and we need to take care of that we need to put in security all these things are not free but for some people it's a good trade-off now we cannot connect and now we have to troubleshoot what is going on here for troubleshooting we can look at the traffic dashboard here so we have the IP in here and this is the 8080. This is the port we want to remove again um, because as I just found out, there is no authentication in front of it. So if you don't do it from inside um, or if you don't do it in, in a VPN or something, then anyone could see this and that's not something I want. So, but anyway, we can look at this right now. To me, this is also new. I have worked with traffic, but I've never seen this dashboard and it's actually quite cool. So let's click around and see if we can, uh, if we find somewhere the mistake that makes this unresolvable right now. Okay. Okay. So we have the docmos, we have the host, which forwards here through the web secure endpoint. That looks fine to me. So this is how it should be. Maybe it's just a thing of waiting a bit. Okay. It was just waiting. So the certificate needed some time before it got issued for us. And now we have our workspace and now we can say till Carlos. Uh, blog and YouTube and I put it to Carlos my email and for the sake of this demo because I'm going to tear down the server in a bit the password is the same email so now we will set it up and we have docmost it's installed and now we can be the first one edit the page so this is like the root page page welcome in this space I will document and now we can say one-on-one -on -one meetings um, idea logs decision logs okay awesome already I'm happy with that now we can play around with that there are a couple of limitations so a couple of things I found and the tutorial actually talks about this for the configuration uh, we I have my login now but inviting other people would not work because let's say we have our space here somewhere manage members we can invite someone, but you would just be able to send the invitation and then you would need to 
well, basically have an email service. So the next step would be to add an email service. But for this tutorial, this is not inside the scope of this tutorial anymore. I think you can set this up quite easily by adding those into the environment variables, into the Docker Compose file. This should be totally fine. So if you edit the Docker Compose, you should be able to add this here into the environment. So just add the stuff here and add your credentials for your SS, S, uh, SMTP data. And of course, the inundation needs to work. The other thing is file storage. Um, it supports local storage. So what we can try is just to upload something and see how it, how it works. Home root page. Let's just upload something from this blog. Let's see. Image of me in... Okay, so let's move this in here. We can align it to the left and the center and make it smaller. Okay, perfect. So now it should be uploaded. And if I read the page, it should still be there. Yes, it is still there. And how I see this, it is getting stored in the local storage, which is, let's see, probably somewhere here in the volumes app data storage. So if we would now go into the docmost folder, we, would, we should see some images. We can try this right now. Let me see if I can find it. Ah, okay. We need to set, uh, give the right name because we have the scoping of it. So docmost, docmost. Yep. And there is our data mount point. Actually, I've never looked into that, but maybe find something in there. Oh yeah. Okay. So there's apparently something in there. There's my image. <laughs> nice. So that works, but of course it's not a productive server. Once I tear the server down or once I delete it, everything's going to be gone and the, all the images are gone and the database. So we would need to have a backup solution, but it is definitely enough to play around with it. See if you like it, see if it's enough for this use case. And if you have more problems here with, with installation, I put a small trouble, troubleshooting section in here that might help you with a couple of things here. How do you use Notion and how do you use it with your teams? Please write a comment below. And if you want to learn more about software development teams and how to run projects, you can check out this video over here.